Hey everyone, this is uh, Andrew Nagel here, and welcome to the uh, cold connection frame tutorial. Now, what I mean by cold connection is uh, we won't be using any soldering in this uh, frame construction. We will just be, you know, using cold connections. We'll just be twisting the wires together. Um, in this piece, we're going to be doing this uh, purple labradorite and uh, smoky quartz facet. I figured I would show you guys kind of a way, <clears throat> you know, how I construct the um, the opening for a faceted material like that, and then also um, how I, you know, do the backing for something that's cab that's like, you know, not see-through. Um, so yeah, we will get going. So the first thing I do with... Um, any piece when I'm designing it is I'll outline the stones as you can kind of see on here and then I will um, you know start doing my detailing kind of draw out where I want my design to go and you know really um, while I'm doing the the drawing of the detailing out I do put a lot of thought into like what wires and what gauges I'm gonna be using so it's not it's not random a lot of it is planned out um, you know like here I'm planning to use uh, the thicker two by one rectangular wire. And then, you know, like this line here um, is attached to a uh, 21G wire. You know, some of those are, you know, easily seen up here. Um, sometimes it gets difficult to get all the fine detailing in there, um, especially when you're drawing with pencil. I want to start um, designing on like an iPad or something like that so you can get a bit more in depth with it. But, um, you know, that'll be the future and whatnot. So after I have my um, general design, you know, planned out and whatnot, I go ahead and I start drawing my frame over that, like you can see over here. These I started with the pencil detailing, you know, outline a stone, and then I start doing the rest of the detailing, and then I drew the pen framing on there. And so, since we have the uh, faceted smoky quartz here, we're going to be drawing on a section of the frame that is open here and now when you're drawing this it doesn't have to be perfect you know um, definitely get as close to as you can so we're going to start off with that and then um, since the labdorite does not need to be you know see-through you don't need like clear view throughout it like if it was an aquamarine that had pretty good uh, clarity, I would want to leave that open. Um, but in this instance, we're not going to leave it open. We're just going to have a big support that comes down that way. And then at the bottom, I generally like to keep things a bit flatter. Um, and one thing I enjoy about designing on uh, this gridded paper is you can kind of have, you know, almost kind of like predetermined little stop points for when you're drawing out your frame. Kind of like I can stop at these two, you know, um, quarter inch squares right from the middle, you know, and then I can kind of keep going out if I wanted to. It's a really good way to make sure that your frame is um, an even space, so that way when you start doing your detailing, your detailing comes out even as well. Um, And then I like to just kind of continue on and do an outline. When I'm doing my frame, I don't follow curves. I just do straight lines on the frame. So I'm going to just go up from this point up to this square, about halfway through. And then I'm just going to go up two more squares. I'm actually going to go up three. the detailing kind of goes out there and as you can see I just kind of outline where the detailing will be and then up at the top here um, <clears throat> the type of bale that I'm going to construct <clears throat> excuse me uh, the type of bale that I'm going to construct will have uh, 221G square wires. I might even use 20G square wires. Um, 
And then I'll have some half round that comes out of the design here, and those will wrap around the 21G to make it a good substantial bale. Um, I'll have another video of, you know, a couple different types of bales that I make. I'll probably have separate videos for each of them, to be honest. Um, and so this is what I mean um, about how you can even out the design with your frame here. Uh, as you can see, we've got you know, pretty much half of it drawn on there. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to mirror what you've drawn out on this side over here on this side. So as you can see, we have this point that stops there. Stop it there, and that point there. It's a little off on that point, but that's okay. We're just drawing it out. And then we're going to want to think about where we want some supports. Going to have some near the top and the bottom of the cab so that way it doesn't, you know, shift and doesn't, you know, fall through. Um, hmm. I think having a support underneath here. And then on top would be good. And then possibly another support down here, but once we get into the construction of the frame, we'll see if we want to add another support down there. Um, but when you're drawing, it's it's not always so easy to keep the design perfectly mirrored or perfectly, you know, even, even if you're doing, you know, an asymmetrical design. And you, you, you just at least want each side to be balanced is kind of what I'm getting at. And so keeping your frame balanced on each side, even for an asymmetrical piece, is a really good way to keep it um, aesthetically pleasing to the eye once the piece is finished. Um, because sometimes when you're doing asymmetrical pieces, it can, uh, I, I don't know, it can, it, they can just kind of look unbalanced. And, you know, even though both sides don't match on this um, design, you can still get a good balanced um, looking piece, uh, you know, just with your detailing and uh, starting off with a good solid frame. I remember, I believe it was Matt Svata said, um, you know, you know, the nicer the frame, the nicer the piece. And he heard that from someone else as well. But as long as you start off with a really solid foundation, it'll be easier for you to achieve a really solid um, final detailed or, um, you know, final uh, product. Um, but yeah. Hey, everyone. Uh, so we're going to be moving on to the next part, which is uh, constructing uh, the cold connected frame. And what I've done is I've cut off what is going to be my uh, outlining wire that'll go all the way around the outside. And then I've also cut off what is going to be my center supports. These are also going to serve as the um, setting for the smoky quartz stone. And so the first thing we're going to need to do is build the setting for the smoky quartz stone and also connect these together. Because, you know, it's not really going to do a whole lot apart like that. So when you're building a setting for a uh, stone like this, there's a couple ways you can do it. I'm basically going to be building two halves and uh, bring them together to make this whole center part. The other way you could do it is by using one of these and then twisting around a triangle, you know, just in one part of this. But I wanted um, some extra lengths coming off the top without having to twist another, you know, length of wire onto the triangle setting at one point that might lift the stone up on a different part. If that makes sense, um, that was kind of my, my thought process here. So starting off, you know, we're going to want this length coming up. So then... We're going to bend our wire to these sections of 
stone that we need here. That's pretty close. Not quite. Need a little bit more length there. Okay. Right about there. And there is hmm, almost one half. Move that down just a bit. All right, that's one half of that. And what we're going to do is mirror that here. This other wire. because we're going to need it to match on both sides, so. Okay. Straighten out our extra lengths there. Let's see how this sits on there. Um, I need to do some adjusting on that one. Oh yeah, we need to do some adjusting on that one. Turn that out just a little bit more. Maybe a little too big. Maybe not. Because we are going to stack these. Alrighty. Looks like we are good to go. So we're going to bind these together now. Um, I'm going to be using half round. 22G, half hard. So cut off a section of that. I, I really don't measure a lot of my sections of wires, to be completely honest, and that's probably why my scrap bin is as full as it is. Um, but, start this off, we're going to attach it. Anything on this part of the setting. So basically down on the bottom part where the uh, the bottom part of the triangle of the cut will sit. Okay. Then we will stack these on top of each other. You can also set them side by side. Um, sometimes I find these wires just kind of act better when they're stacked instead of side by side. I get a lot of slipping when they're side by side. When I build um, settings this way at least. So as you can see, I'm kind of holding these with my pliers to uh, make sure they stay super tight. And then just pull that 22 on there. You're going to want it to be pretty tight, you know. This is, this is your frame. Okay. 
And then what we're going to do, split this off. Ooh. As a good of a 90 degree angle as you can. And then bring your, your half round down just a little bit and clip it off. And then also bring the other side to 90 degrees as close as you can. And then the other side, you can kind of switch a little. Whichever side was on bottom, you know, switch over, put that on top. That keeps that stone in there nice and even. And then kind of the same deal, you're going to want to attach your 22 before you start twisting this on. If it's easier, you know, twist on a little section, but don't go a whole lot. Just get that wire kind of secured on there, and then use your pliers to get that end nice and secure on there. All right, and once that's secure on there, bring that half round down the rest of that length only as much as you need to you know go to where the top of the pendant would be and that's why it's good to have a drawing as kind of a reference while you're doing your design and while you're working on the pendant uh, because then you can go back to you know what your plan was for it and stuff like that I'm also going to be releasing a um, why it's important to plan a piece video in conjunction with these ones. Um, and so, you know, it is, it, it's, you don't have to plan a piece, but I personally feel you get a more finished result if you start off with an idea, at least, of where you want the piece to go. You know, what stones you're going to be using and stuff like that. So, okay. Now that we have that built, and actually what we're going to do, I lied to you a little bit, we're gonna straighten that back out. We're going to utilize it like this. So keep one section long and one section to the left. It, it's kind of actually your personal preference. If you want both of these going out, my the thought here is, is that these are going to connect to the outer wire. And so you could have one connecting here, one connecting here. You could have both connecting down here, honestly. You could have one connecting here, one connecting there. You know, whichever you prefer, um, whichever works for the design that you're doing at the time. And so now taking our super long length of uh, 18 gauge. Oh, that's right. 18 gauge square wire is what I'm using for these. I will write that in the description so you know what I'm starting off with here. Um, I use 18 gauge Argentium for my base wires on my frames all the time. It's my go-to. Um, I will use 21G for some of the smaller supports in here, but um, I might even take that up to, to 20G instead of 21. Um, but the 18G is just super solid. And um, you guys will see in my soldered frame video um, why I use the Argentium. It's actually a very cool silver. And yeah, uh, once you guys get into soldering, you'll really appreciate it. But moving on with this, um, we will start making bends here, you know, once you've set your piece in the middle, kind of in the middle of the length, because you're going to want equal ends on both sides to bring up, you know, your outside detailing here for the frame. You're going to start down at the bottom. I mean, I guess you could start at the top, but I prefer to have my cold connections up here at the top when I'm doing these styles of frames. And then kind of just grab that with your pliers so you know where you're bending it. and bend that to the angle that you need. 
and just continue along your outline here. Keep it as straight and as flat as possible. All right, until you get up to the top. Then you have half right there. I'm going to kind of take that off to the side real quick, just like that. And then do the same on the other side. Keep it as flat and as even as possible. starting to come together, <clears throat> at least the general shape. It's always a really good moment when you're designing a pendant and you've, you know, basically gotten it to the shape that you need and the detailing certain to get to your final product. It's like, oh, it's coming together. That's always a good point. So with your loose ends up here, we're going to take this one. I'm going to cut off some of the extra here. We do not need all of that. And so once you've got it all lined up, you know, your outline where you need it to be, you're going to take your extra end. And this is where the term cold connection comes in. I mean, not specifically because of twisting the wires to each other, but just because there's no heat used. Make sure you're still doing all right there. And this extra one, we're going to bend with it like that. And then if you have enough of a length, this is another reason I like to leave extra length there. Um, you can utilize your 18G as the start for your bail. You can attach other wires here to build this up and make it thicker. I wouldn't do just the 18G bent over for a bale. It's just a little, just not substantial enough. Um, but once you wrap some other gauges of wire around there and add some other, um, add some other stability to it, then, then it'll be good to go. Now we're going to attach... Going to attach our uh, centerpiece here. Sorry, just kind of thinking about what my best options are here. Starting at the bottom, cut off our extra. Going to wrap it around the center there. going out of frame there for a second. Sorry about that. The 18G can be a little bit of a pain to manipulate sometimes. But once you get those pliers around there and get it going, it'll do what you want it to. Try and make sure those ends are as tucked and bent down as possible. You can always go through and file down a little bit more later. Go ahead and take that and attach it up at the top. Once 
once again, make sure those ends are tucked and bent in. You can always use your plier tips to kind of smooth those ends down. And you just kind of want to double check too to your drawing. Make sure you're staying on target. Looks like we need to move that metal in just a little bit. Especially when you're attaching links that way. You don't want to put it in the wrong spot. And this one I'm going to wrap around my bail wire. All right. Some adjustments. We are starting to look like we have the frame for a pendant. We're not completely done yet. <clears throat> We're going to add a few more bars for stability. I'm going to switch over from the 20G to the we're gonna, or I'm sorry, the, from the 18G is what I was using before. Um, I'm gonna switch over to the 20G now. I get my G's confused there. I've got like, I don't know, I've got like 12 different gauges on my desk at all different times. I've never really counted them. I have a list up for you guys. Um, even with the list, I still don't know how many gauges of wire I have on my desk. How ridiculous is that? So, connecting some 20G square into the center here. You're going to want to try to keep things as flat as possible because, you know, be conscious of the stones that you're having to set on here. Like we have the Labradorite cab and we don't want that to um, shift and get weird. We want that to be, you know, stable on there. So And then connect your ends like so. Going to add for sure one more here. Going to add it on top so that way I can keep it flat with these other supports that I have on here. going to utilize some of this wrapped around 21G as kind of a detail in the final product. Is that something to always think about too? I mean, um, you, you do want to always have structural integrity in consideration, but you can utilize parts of the frame, parts of the exposed frame as details in a piece. Um, you don't want it to be flimsy though, so you know, utilize it where where you're able to. And that is up to the discretion of the artist, of course. And the support up here Yeah, we are going to add it up here. Okay. I wasn't quite sure, actually. Sometimes I'll draw the supports on my details, and then I end up putting them in completely different places. All right. 
make sure all of your ends are nice and tucked in. Because, you know, one thing to consider, too, is uh, your ends don't just get caught on fabric. Your ends um, get caught on skin and hair and stuff like that. And so you don't want those little wire ends to be pulling anything. It happens, of course, you know. I think, I think some people kind of realize that the backs won't always be smooth, but you want to make your backs as smooth as possible. That's why in most of my videos I'll run my like fingers with the glove over the backs of a pendant to show that, you know, it doesn't snag on anything. Alrighty, we're going to add one more length in here. So we're going to cut off a bit more of our 20G. And we'll attach it there. I really should measure my lengths of wire because I've got a lot of scrap laying around here. When you're cutting your wire, I guess just be cognizant about, you know, how much you're going to need to wrap around the outside frame. If you want to, you can cut off enough extra length that you wrap it around enough that the whole bar is covered. You know, it, it's kind of nice to have that whole thick wired look around the edge of it. Um, my detailings for this piece, though, will ultimately be coming over the side. So I felt that that would be a little bit of overkill on the silver use for this piece. Right. And then making sure all your frames are tucked in, or all your ends are tucked in, of course. Um, so that way it's a nice smooth finish, but yeah. You always want to make sure your stones sit in where you want them to. Move that to the side there. A oh. little bit of an adjustment needed there. That's okay. That's how that goes. All righty. And then we also... We'll be putting the lab cab right there. And so there is your cold connection frame. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out either here or on social media and ask me. You can use these frames in any way, really. Um, personally, I don't do cold connected frames anymore for my pieces just because I've moved into soldering and I like the... the um, flatter frame that I can achieve with a soldered frame. Um, but the cold connected ones are great for anyone who doesn't have access to like a torch and stuff like that, or if you just don't want to be using fire at your desk. Um, you know, cold connected frames are definitely, they're sturdy, you know, for sure. Um, you know, this thing is not going to fold easily. And so, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, as I said, please let me know what you think of it, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.